Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology, and we have another amazing guest today. <laughs> His name is Sanati, as many of you already know, and he's an expert in astrocartography, and he's also very spiritual. We are just uh, talking for the last half an hour, forty-five minutes almost. That. Uh, what are his experiences and I was also sharing my experiences. So today, finally, we are going to discuss on Saturn Ketu conjunction, which is going to happen in the sign of Sagittarius from March, I guess, very soon, not much time remaining for that. So we will upload this in two or three parts. So this is the first part that you are seeing and Sanati, welcome to Exotic Astrology and he also has a channel, I guess. So I will pin the channel in the description section of this video. So you can please go and subscribe to his channel. And recently he had done a big webinar on Rahu and Ketu, which was almost for four, four and a half hours. And many other esteemed astrological speakers were also there. So the stage is all yours. <laughs> Namaste, Bubby G. It's such an honor to be on Exotic Astrology. I've been following your channel for some time and I'm just so excited to meet you. Uh, you're even greater in uh, person to person than you are on your videos and I really enjoyed our discussion earlier um, and I just am um, really looking forward to discussing this very powerful upcoming transit which definitely needs to be noted for all of us. Yes, yes. Um, as mentioned, it's in Purva Shada Nakshatra, which uh, is in Sagittarius, about 13.2 to 26.4. So that's kind of the section of Sagittarius, which is for Purva Shada Nakshatra. It is ruled by two different devas. One is Varuna Deva, uh, Sri Varuna Deva, and the other is Sri Japa or Sri Jal which is the deity of water. And some argue that Varuna and Appa are also very similar. But here we're kind of so somewhat making a distinction, saying there's a co-rulership, Varuna and Appa, which is also called Jaldeva. Uh, the ruling uh, Graha over uh, Porvashada is going to be Shukra, is Venus. So there's a strong Venus influence getting brought through this nakshatra. Now, uh, Porvashada is the archer's bow. It's two uh, stars which create the archer's bow. So this is a representation of a spiritual and evolutionary shooting for the stars. Now, Porvashada means the unconquerable individual or the indestructible character, like someone who is invincible, like someone who cannot be destroyed or have any negative uh, effect or maya or illusion in their life. So this is a very deep quality here. Um, now, the, this is a search for truth. Purvashada has to do with searching for the truth. The individual is looking for sat, which is universal truth, or divine law, or divine knowledge. This is some of the strongest energy of Purvashada Nakshatra, is the seeking of the divine knowledge. Now, uh, Porvashada Nakshatra removes everything which does not serve us. So as we get into this transit, get ready for things to be removed because Saturn can minimalize and K2 is Moksha Karika. So when you have these energies coming together along with the energy of Porvashada, even though it is indestructible, Saturn and K2 is creating vulnerability. And sometimes that Porvashada shows the vulnerability that we might experience. Yes, someone with the highest evolution of Porvashada Nakshatra is completely invincible. But that we all have different positions in Porvashada. We all have different levels of evolution with Porvashada. But all of us are going through this energy together. Now, uh, Porvashada, because of Shukra influence, supports refinement and sensory evolution on all levels. So when I'm talking about the removing of that which doesn't serve us, I'm definitely talking about the things we put inside of our bodies, but also the relationships in our life that don't serve us. Also certain things that we might indulge in that might be pleasurable, but are separating us farther from Sat, the, the ultimate divine truth. 
So as, as, as Saturn and Ketu go into this nakshatra, get ready for this refinement and evolution of your, of your Venus type vibration and where Venus rules in your chart to have this strong evolutionary or refining, uh, purifying sense. It will be removing that which doesn't serve. Now, this nakshatra also activates the full moral and ethical evolution of the native. Okay, so we're talking about as Saturn and Ketu going into this energy, the full moral and ethical evolution, which means the guru within. Yes, there's the guru without, which means honoring all of our teachers, but there's also the greatest teacher within ourselves, which is our higher self, which is our divine self. I think this energy is supposed to evolve us into that person, into that entity. So that removes aspects of the character which could be considered immoral or irresponsible. So whatever parts of us are immoral or irresponsible, this transit is trying to remove them from you. It's trying to remove that irresponsible or immoral character. Um, so that aligns us to our higher self. Now, a little bit about the specifics of the transit is Saturn remains direct in Porvashada. It started on November 26th of last year, November 26th, 2018. That's when Saturn first started to activate this Porvashada nakshatra. But Shani is Shani Shiraya, the slow mover. So it's just starting to accumulate some of its energy still. Uh, and by the way, Saturn remains direct in Porvashada Nakshatra until April 30th, 2019. So that's a direct, uh, on April 30th, Saturn will go Vakri, will go retrograde at 26.24 Sagittarius. The interesting thing about this retrograde position is it's right before Porvashada Nakshatra is over. It's in the last little bit of the last pada of Porvashada Nakshatra. So Saturn's almost there. He's getting close. Shanais Chiraya Namaha. Saturn is reeling it back in and going <laughs> retrograde. And that's until September 19, Saturn in retrograde position, going retrograde in Porvashada Nakshatra. Um, so that's very fascinating. So K2 meets in Porvashada. K2 will join Porvashada on May 8th. The game okay. begins. <laughs> yes, and that's when the energy starts to climax. You can think of K2 as the climaxer here, the one who's bringing all of the karma to fruition, to be burned in the sacrificial homa, to be <laughs> burned in the sacrificial fire by Lord Agni. So... Uh, K2 remains, uh, K2 and Saturn, once K2 enters Porvashada May 8th, they will remain united in Porvashada, basically within a degree each other, until October 3rd. So that means that they're within a degree for many, many months, all over the course of the summer into the fall. They're still re remaining and traveling together. So this is some of the tightest, longest lasting conjunction that I've ever seen. Uh, so Saturn leaves Porvashada December 27th, 2019. Finally. Okay, so it's there almost the whole year. K2 leaves Porvashada on January 15th of next year. So the whole year is big lesson of Porvashada Nakshatra, this evolution, the removal of what does not serve us, the searching for higher truth. But sometimes the removal of what doesn't serve us means the removal of our attachments or our dependencies or the things which we cling the closest to, especially with K2 as a moksha karaka coming in. Uh, so that remains Saturn and K2 are in Porvashada together from May 8th to December 27th. So seven months, set more than seven months they're traveling together in this nakshatra. Um, two more things I just want to touch on. One of my favorite nakshatra authors is Shubhakaran. Uh, and Shubhakaran talks that uh, Porvashada is a Padadosha nakshatra. Uh, pada dosha nakshatra means, depending on the pada, could cause serious affliction. So this has to do with our family and ourselves. Now, when we're talking about the positive side of it, 
which is removing that which does not serve us. So, so the, the challenges that this family member might go through might be in the long run what's best for them for their spiritual evolution. But um, if they have this in the birth chart or the, the transit is strong on them, it could be very difficult. The first pada of um, uh, poor Vashada is influence the mother's health. The second pada of poor Vashada influence the father's health. The third pada of poor Vashada nakshatra influence the uncle's health. And the fourth pada, the last pada, is the own health. And we talked about Saturn will be entering the fourth pada of the nakshatra um, uh, at some point in, uh, I have the date here, uh, April 30. So maybe there will be some cold going around. Maybe there will be some flu going around because everyone's individual health is affected from the uh, pada dosha nakshatra. Yeah, um, immediately after entering, it is going retrograde also. Yeah, so then the recovery from the cold, the recovery uh -huh. from the flu. So maybe there's a bug going around. So be careful during that time with the immune system. When uh, Saturn is, or K2 in the, in the last part of uh, Purvashada. Um, now, one last thing I want to say from a spiritual perspective, and then I would love to hear anything you would love to share, Babiji. But I want to talk about Lord Varuna because Lord Varuna is the ruling deity and he gives a divine gift of Varcho Grahana Shakti. Uh, Varcho Grahana Shakti, which offers a restorative and a replenishing effect. It gives energy, it gives power, it gives enthusiasm, such as the satisfaction we might derive from drinking a glass of water. Shri Appa, Shri Deva. If you're very thirsty, then you have a, a glass of water. You are restored. You are replenished. You are ready to go. So it has this divine effect. Such a, so this allowed natives of Purvashada Nakshatra, people who have certain strong positions in Purvashada, are very passionate, enthusiastic individuals. And they also could be strongly opinionated. And that's not a good or a bad thing, but that's a Sagittarius poor Vashada vibration. But Lord Verona offers this gift of replenishment, reinvigorating. So if this conjunction is very strong, in other words, we might have certain things in our lives that we enjoy them that are holding us back. Uh, and we don't realize they're holding us back because we're just participating in this. Uh, so, so, so then because of this uh, activation, uh, you have to remove that which does not serve you. But that can be very painful. That can be very difficult. And it can be vata and pitta uh, vitiating because of Saturn and Ketu. <clears throat> yes. So we must drink from the water of Lord Apas. We must drink from the water of Lord Varuna. Uh, and this means to purify ourselves of all of our unethical, our, 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 our darker shadow side aligned to the guru within. Uh, and let us be replenished by the divine energy of God from the divine energy of Lord Apas, Lord Varuna. Uh, may we be replenished so that we may be able to fulfill our dharma, so that we may be able to fulfill our spiritual evolution. May, may we receive that purification. So that's just something I, I feel about this Saturn K2 transit, and it's a very long transit. So it's definitely, I'm happy you asked me to talk about it. It's going to be very powerful, I feel. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's very interesting. And I guess the most interesting part will happen when, uh, I think when both of, because K2 is always retrograde, but when Saturn is also retrograde, you know, from April end to September, as you said, first week i guess or second week so that will be the climax i guess yes and i think this will be a time of great consequences for immoral actions so yeah. if, if there are dishonesty whether political government society maybe those things will come to the light maybe those things will come to the truth because in, in through the energy of poor Vashada is to look for such ultimate truth and ultimate truth is honesty or ultimate honesty 
So Saturn K2 working their way through this nakshatra, I think makes us all become more honest. So the sooner that we can get honest, the sooner this will be good transit for us. But whatever little areas of our life we have secret, whatever little areas of our life we have hidden, this is a time for consequences of, the, of that. And, and for the darkness and the, and the maya and the illusion to come to light. And, and sometimes that can be a painful process, depending on how dark that secret is, or as they like to say, the skeleton in your closet. <laughs> <laughs> and what is your opinion on uh, like transits within the natal planet? So suppose like somebody has prominent planets there. So what, what is your opinion on transits? If you have seen, you know, like these big, big planets transiting, I mean, the slow ones. Yeah. over your natal planet. So what is your opinion on that? So um, are you, just to clarify, are you saying that people are having the return of the Graha during this transit? No, uh, no I'm saying suppose somebody has, you know, Mercury or Sun, Moon, Venus in Purvashara or Sagittarius. Yes. So in that context, I was saying, what, yes. what, what is your opinion on that? Because now they are transiting over the natal planets, you know. Yeah. And it, depending on which house, that will have big influence too. But if it's on the ascendant, for example, that person's character is going to be greatly transformed during this period. And um, a, ca a character is personality. Uh, and a personality has strengths and a personality has weaknesses. So, so, so Shukra's influence over all of those planets is saying, okay, you have personality weaknesses. We all have personality weaknesses, but it's time for you to work on yours not talk about or criticize other people's uh, weaknesses, but actually focus on and work on your own. So it's going to be, depending on the planetary relationship between Saturn and K2 in the natal chart, that, uh, that, that willingness to kind of look at the self can be very challenging. Um, but, but again, there is this opportunity for gr great prosperity. Many people, uh, great histor historical people, have Purvashada Nakshatra, both on the angel side and on the demon side. Okay. On angel side, we have uh, lots of great leaders with Purvashada but we also have dictators. Yeah, Hitler also had his moon in Purvashada, if I'm right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Sanin Ashwini. So... There is this um, position of the poor Vashada, the transit on the individual. Uh, it, 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 it allows them to remove the things which are not helping them be successful. So oh, let's okay. say they have Sun, Mercury, Venus uh, energy. Uh, but, but actually, the ultimate aim of poor Vashada, which is connected with Jupiter, is moksha. Yes. But, but, but. This is a different philosophical uh, conversation, but before we can do moksha, we must fulfill our dharma. There is no moksha without dharma. <laughs> so this yeah. is the poor Vashada people that uh, it, it can help you um, be a better version of yourself so that um, you can now fulfill your dharma at a higher aptitude. Yes, so we, we will do the part two of this, I think, in the next session, all right? So stay tuned, everybody. Thank you very much. See you in part two, okay? <laughs>